Hello, this is the Darwin FPV Fold 8.4. I reviewed it in September of 2024 and I thought it was pretty good. Um, it flies really smoothly, it folds up, it's got a GPS and it flew very well. Unfortunately, it had this situation where sometimes the GPS would just disappear. And the theory was that because it was an SPI receiver, that the CPU was working too hard to occasionally would say, ignore the GPS, we won't count that and that would disappear. And so you couldn't rely on that to like have rescue mode or anything like that. So I took advantage in March of 2025, I was reviewing the Kaiweet soldering iron and I went into this and I added a proper physical um, ELRS receiver and set it up to use that. Now what I didn't do in that video is fly it. And so obviously I wanted to test this out and see if it would work. Spoiler alert, it takes a while to work, which is why I thought it might be useful to take you through the various things I tried to actually get this thing going. So we'll take a look at that. Just before we do, a quick word from our sponsor today, who is PCBWay. PCBWay can prototype and assemble your PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably know this already. Now, I don't have much of a clue about PCB design myself, but with open source hardware projects being more popular, you'll often be able to get a Gerber file which contains the PCB design, send this to PCBWay and get your own PCBs made without needing to know anything about the design process. In fact, PCBWay have projects that people have shared with them and you can get Gerber files or just order the PCB directly from the site with the author getting a kickback from it. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do and the materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. Did you know it's PCB Way's 11th anniversary? From now until July the 18th, they are having a bunch of special offers on. Look out for special discounted prices on PCB services, 3D printing and CNC, coupons and a lucky draw with a chance to win some exciting gifts. Check it all out at PCBWay.com. Now on with the video. Hello and welcome to the field. Nothing is what it tells you it's going to be. This morning, um, having checked the well forecast, I was ready to go out because it said bright, sunny, clear day and we had thick fog. So it's now like gone three o'clock in the afternoon and it's now cloudy, which I guess is an improvement. Anyway, we are here to test the little Darwin Fold Ape 4. Uh, I upgraded it from an SPI uh, ELRS receiver to an actual one. So I'm hoping this will fix the problem we had last time where the satellite count would just disappear because that's either the system being overloaded and unable to cope with stuff, which is why I've swapped it for a proper receiver because SPI takes up more processing power or there's something dodgy in the power where potentially that uh, GPS is cutting out occasionally and that will have the same effect of like causing nothing there so it's gonna be one or the other um, so I've I fixed one let's hope for the best I won't be going too far unless I get through a couple of batteries and it's good also the wind is coming from this direction going blowing that way and that's where the length is I don't want to go too far out because this is too small and it's like uh, will it go against the wind coming back don't know let's find out what's going with the radio master gx12 hd0 goggles let's get flying well in battery number one it seemed to be doing okay a lot less lock satellites but occasionally it would go down i'm used to sort of satellites building up over time so this would go to sort of eight and then seven and then on battery number two, it seemed to get worse. So it would start off on six, it would get to the heady heights of seven, and then it would potentially go down lower. So we'd hit stuff like five satellites, which is not very good, generally speaking. And we even had the sats go to zero. Now I did a little flip, but really that shouldn't lose everything. It's really weird it will go out that much. It would come back eventually, but still seemed pretty weird to me. So back at home I decided to conduct an experiment to check how many satellites I could pick up in my garden and then compare it when I move the antenna. There is a bit of a problem that my garden can be a bit of a, a dead spot but what happens is after well more than five minutes I eventually got five satellites. So moved antenna from there over to just under this motor which is one of the places I might put it usually the back but let's go for the front and see if that's really the the problem with the GPS well I actually ended up getting no satellites at all 
moving the antenna like that but I just thought you know what it's my garden being my garden I'll go out and fly it and it'll be fine and you know I sat it on the ground for 10 minutes I flew it around for 15 minutes I went through five batteries and I got zero satellites so it seems that's a worse place to put the receiver antenna now, although that original GPS seemed to give lots of sats when it had the SPI receiver, I had this old TBS GPS lying around, so I thought, you know what, I'll just try changing out this GPS and see if it works better. And I was getting sats in the garden, good enough, I thought, to go out to the field and give it another try. And for the first few minutes, I thought, yeah, it's, it's holding eight sats, it's doing all right. This, this is going well. And then, we had that little dip again we went to seven and then we went to six and again you could say well you just fly under a tree it's a bit sensitive it's doing that sort of thing but it just kept happening and when you've got the whole sky ahead of you and it still goes down to seven sats from eight you think i can't trust this still clearly i was going to have to do more with whatever hassle the interference with the wires were taking Okay, take uh, four, five, I don't know, different times. We've wrapped the GPS uh, wires in copper, copper tape, and then wrapped that in regular tape so it didn't short anything. That is not grounded, which I have done before, uh, but I thought we'll see if this makes a difference. Probably not, as nothing seems to, but we'll try. I'll show you the whole of flight number one, albeit sped up quite a lot. You will see that I sped took off with six sats after spending again another five minutes and at this point I was feeling very pessimistic but the curious thing that happened is it did build up it only went up to seven and right at the end of the flight it went up to eight but I was like well that's slightly different than what happened before at least so on flight two I actually took off with nine sats the the fact it got more sats and remembered instead of just going down to like five and slowly trying to build up again was pretty amazing again i didn't really give it that much thought as it had managed to get sort of like into nine previously and then would fall down but this tended to see like it would hold it if it did flicker down to eight then it would go up to nine and again by the end of it we were at 10 i hadn't seen double figure satellites in a long time on battery free it kept building again we started off nine but then we built up we went past 10 we went to 11 we started flickering into 12 and by the time we landed we were on 14. once again if i go through the footage i can see bits where it flickered down a little bit but it would very quickly recover and it wouldn't go down like below nine or anything like that so it still seemed to me much much stronger and by battery number four, my last battery, it seemed to be holding again, starting at 10, building up very quickly to where it was, and then adding on a couple of satellites all the time. So we managed to get up to around 16, but this seemed to be topping out there, so it would fall back to 15 or 16, and then just touch 17 again. Enough for me, though, to be pretty excited by the fact it seemed to be actually doing the right thing finally. Oh my god, I think it's fixed. It's holding its satellites. It's got like at least 10 and it seems to be going slowly up as uh, we carry on. I've spent cumulative amounts of time, like so many flights, trying different things to get this working. Finally is. The, the reason being that I might swap this out for an HD camera because this is just nice and small and very smooth. And uh, well, well, we'll look at that next time perhaps. A couple of other things to sort as well, like the... Uh, Rescue mode needs a couple of tweaks to make it work better, but we'll do those and we'll come back. Now, if you're thinking copper tape, what's he on about and what is he doing? Well, first off, your copper tape, this sort of stuff. You can get it from Amazon, eBay, uh, weirdly garden centers. People use this to put around plant pots to stop snails going up and eating their um, flowers and stuff. And although it looks quite stiff and stuff when it's on the roll, once you take it off, there's not much to it, it's very thin and you can wrap it around pretty easily. What we're trying to do here is, is make a shielded cable. If you ever cut inside a good quality USB cable, you will see either some sort of mesh wire going through, uh, which acts as protection, or in combination with that, some sort of 
what looks like foil that goes through it. These do a good job of protecting it from the other radiation from the other signals that are happening. So whether this is like electrical radiation signals versus other things broadcasting, I don't know. Obviously putting that receiver in made a difference and that receiver of course broadcasts as well because it's telemetry receiving so it's broadcasting its signal back. That could be doing it. It could be the increased amount of wires and that radiation from those wires doing it. Sometimes I have to do this, sometimes I don't. This was a, a recent build. It's quite full. It's got a whole um, open IPC system. It's got, you know, stuff squished in there. This uh, GPS works absolutely fine. Generally on planes, it's very good because the GPS is a long way away. You can stretch things out. On smaller quads, I have had to do it. If you look in here, you can just see that copper over there that's uh, protecting that wire on the GPS and it, it works better for me. Uh, this one, you can't see it because because in such close proximity, I covered it with a bit of standard electrical tape just to stop any chance of that shorting out of connections. So yes, yeah, sometimes you need to do it, sometimes you don't. It seems to be there are unique things in each quad that sometimes I have to do it and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm in a very sort of enclosed, crushed up environment where everything works fine. Sometimes it's like a wide open thing and something is, is bad there and I have to do extra things to make the GPS work. That is something you can try, certainly wrap it in copper. The extra thing you can do with it, if that doesn't work enough its own, is solder on from the ground onto your copper that you've put around the cable and that will ground the whole shield and that will work better, generally speaking. But if you've got your own tips about how to get GPSs working better, please feel free to share them. There are other things you can do, some stuff I haven't tried. I generally go for what's most simple. And of course, I haven't like fixed it brilliantly. It hasn't got like 31 sats there, but anything over sort of 10, which it will hold, I'm happy enough for will keep my position and in the worst case scenario will get me coming home at least. So I hope that was helpful and if you've got your own one of these and you find out that the uh, GPS keeps disappearing, well you have to get rid of that SPO receiver I'm afraid and then go through the slight hassle of putting a proper receiver on there and perhaps wrapping up your cables. But I hope that's helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.